Good morning, everybody. Gosh, it, wouldn't it be like Groundhog Day next weekend? Is that right? Um, I love the t-shirts with the mask on the groundhog. Um, Jeannie Steinkuller, I'm so sorry that you are missing your favorite holiday um, because we can't have it due to COVID, but hey, the t-shirts are great. I may have to stop down and get one. Um, anyway, welcome. This is our last Sunday of January. Um, welcome as we do worship. Our scripture this morning is Psalm 84. One of my favorites. Um, here we go. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts in you. May God bless the reading of his holy word. So, this psalm, speaks to our souls. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. So, in life, the mountaintops are amazing, aren't they? Um, I love mountaintop moments, whether it's with family, whether it's a personal um wow moment, um, whether it's uh, vacation, you know, we can all list those mountaintop experiences. Could be a job promotion, it could be anything. Those mountaintop experiences carry us and let us give us strength. And that that's what this psalm is about the, the how lovely is your dwelling place O lord almighty we have felt god at least i hope that each of you have felt god at one time or another in your lives more than once many times you know each person has their own journey and each person has to define their own mountaintop experiences and their own valleys because we're all different. And, and I want to um, put this a little bit in perspective for each of us that um, maybe helps us to grasp and be aware a little bit more of our of our experiences. So when this Psalm says, um, um, 
Blessed are those, this is found in verse 5, blessed are those whose strength is in you who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's dissect that just a little bit. The Valley of Baca was actually a valley close to Jerusalem. And <clears throat> people would pass through it on their pilgrimage to Jerusalem too. You remember they had to offer sacrifices and pray and all of that stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> it was considered a place where they could let tears go and then find springs to help give them new, um, new energy, I guess, you know, um, and, and that is so cool to me because <clears throat> I think we have to, to always make sure we're in that place of receiving God's grace. So I want to put this in, in a today's thing for you. So, you know, we're in the middle of, well, we're not, we're at the end of football season. The Super Bowl is next Sunday. It's going to be the Chiefs and the Buccaneers and, um, I'm sure most Midwesterners are hoping, hoping for the Chiefs to get another win. But um, <clears throat> what I want to talk about is <clears throat> the wide receiver on the team. So the wide receiver, for those of you that are not knowledgeable in football, is the guys that kind of pass through. They go on the ends, horse on the ends. They dart out. And they make themselves available for the quarterback to throw the football to. Okay? There might be three wide receivers or however many, two. Kind of depends on what play is being called. And they may get the ball or they may not get the ball. They, um, if they get the ball, gosh, some of those runs are just so amazing. They're the ones that can go in and score, can make the next 10 yards or whatever. The wide receiver. Okay, so part of the wide receiver's job in they train and train and train and train for this is to run fast. They got to run fast. They got to get out and go around so that they are open and available to catch that ball, right? Um, so they have to practice running. They have to practice catching. Um, nobody is more disappointed than the wide receiver himself if the ball goes right through his fingertips. It happens. Um, but so they have to practice catching that ball bringing it in, holding it tight so nobody can knock it out. So I am fascinated by the thought that we are the wide receivers of God's goodness and grace. And listen very closely. That does not mean that life doesn't happen. Life happens. Life happens. Illness happens. Um, we all change neighborhoods at the end. I tell you that all the time. Not that you don't know, but I think we have to be very conscious about that. Um, the, the life happens. We have the mountaintops. We have the valleys. The mountaintops, the valleys. When we're in the valleys, it is an opportunity for us to shed our tears, to cleanse our hearts, 
You know the psalm that says, create in me a clean heart, O God. When our heart is cleansed, that means we've let go of a lot of junk, usually. And we all have junk, right? It's when our heart is cleansed that we are ready to run that route. We're ready to go. We're ready to be on the receiving end of the grace and the mercy that God is tossing to us, much like the quarterback tosses the football. We have to be ready to receive it. I think that sometimes, I know for me, um, I can get caught up in life and in, you know, doing things and busyness, um, all of those things, and forget to be still for a little bit. Forget to be still, forget to pray, forget to read my Bible. Forget to do the practice that is necessary to be a receiver of God's grace and God's goodness. That doesn't mean that the ball doesn't get tossed to us and we just didn't get it that time. Um, God is very persistent in his love for us and his care for us in our journey. And don't you just love the, the part where it says, even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest. For herself so I know that for many of you that that are listening this morning the the song his eye is on the sparrow is one of the favorites um, and we forget that we forget that if his eye is on the sparrow God is throwing the football to us a lot, a lot. And when we go through that valley of Baca, that getting, that pilgrimage, getting to the temple, getting to the temple in Jerusalem, I love the part that says, it's a place of springs. And then they go from strength to strength. When we are in a valley, who gives us our strength? Where sometimes you feel like you just go, you have to have the strength that other people give to you. Whether it's a sermon, whether it's a song, whether it's a friend dropping off a, a meal, whether it's any of those things, we go from strength to strength. We go from strength to strength until we appear before God in Zion. That's so great. That's so great. Be prepared to receive the gifts. Be prepared to receive the gifts of God. How do you know if you've received the gifts of God? I don't know that it's Everything in life works smoothly then. I think so many times the gifts of God are those people that are placed there. 
that we can gain strength from, that we can gain wisdom from. I think that um, it's things we've been taught along the way and also things we've let go of along the way. We are receivers of God's amazing grace and mercy for each of us. And when we run those routes, when we practice to get them, it's in that that we find God. It's in that that we find God. We've run the route of being compassionate. We've run the route of being kind. We've run the route of being faithful. We've run the route of loving. And that's what God calls us to do. That's what Jesus has called us to do. And then in turn, we receive that. We receive those gifts. And then this, this last, these last two verses, for the Lord God, I mean, don't you just want to have this on a necklace or something? Okay, guys, you know, maybe write it on your combine. I don't know what to tell you. But for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from whose walk is blameless. O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Amen. Um, before we go to communion, give you a couple of little updates that I know of. Um, Bev Crownover, I spoke with Dan um, again today, and she is on event. She's in ICU. She's got pneumonia and COVID. Um, and so she spends I don't know, maybe 75% of the time on her stomach. She is um, stable at this point and um, the medication is going in and you know, everything is um, in process. So we continue to pray for her and um, hope that we have an amazing outcome with this. Um, I asked Dan uh, if he needed anything from us and he wanted me to thank you for the prayers. And um, he's, you know, he's, he's okay. So um, there is that. And then um, my niece, Michelle, is uh, on hospice and um, there it is. She's getting ready to change neighborhoods. Um, but if you would pray for my sister and brother-in-law and then my brother is taking them this week to Indiana. So um, pray for safe travel for them. Um, that is all I know about, um, but Please let me know if there's anything else that we can be praying for. We're still waiting for baby Walden to make their entrance, her entrance into the world. Um, so continue to pray for Hannah and Justin. Um, let's go to communion now. So I would invite you to get your elements if you would like to take communion and we will pray afterwards on the night that Jesus was betrayed he um, took the loaf and he broke it and he said this is my body broken for you take and eat and do this in remembrance of me
likewise as he poured out the wine. He said, with this, I bring a new covenant. This is my blood shed for you. Take and drink and do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. God, you are the author and the perfecter of our lives. You know our comings, you know our goings. You love us. And for that, we are grateful. Lord, we continue to um, lift up our community as COVID is still going strong, um, praying for the vaccines to get rolled out so that more and more people can get them. Lord, I continue to pray for our church, for each person um, who is a part of our church family, that um, you will be with them, that you help them be aware when you are throwing the passes. Help them to be ready to receive it. Lord, I lift up um, Bev to you, God, and her medical team. I pray for her healing. I pray for the medications to do the work. And God, we just um, lift Dan up to you and Sandy up to you and the and the her children and grandchildren that she would give them um, an immeasurable amount of calm as they wait for this virus to run its course and the medicine to do its work. And Lord, it's never easy when we have to say goodbye to a loved one. Even though we know where Michelle is going, it is still difficult to say goodbye. I ask for travel mercies for my siblings. I ask for your shield of comfort to be around Michelle's family. And God, we know that you will welcome her home on your time. God, for anyone else who needs to hear prayers today, we ask that you be with them. We pray this prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just a little uh, side note, if you're interested, two of the songs that would go really well with today's sermon is, if you want to YouTube them, um, one is called Better Is One Day. Um, it's a great praise and worship song using this psalm. And the other one, of course, is His Eye is on the Sparrow. I invite you, um, check, them, check it out on YouTube. It shouldn't cost you anything. Have a great week, everyone.